Hello lovely viewers and welcome to another yarn dialogue tutorial. Now today we're going to be making a really simple, easy, quick yarn dialogue system, but it has all the features you need to get going. Let me show you the events and you'll see they're all contained within one screen. Don't even use up the whole screen, no scroll bar required. Uh, really simple system. Um, we need two text objects for this and no graphics, nothing. All you need to take part in this tutorial is a copy of GDevelop because without that you're probably going to struggle. Now let me show you what we'll end up with. So we press a button to launch dialog. We hold a button to make it go quicker. You've got the whole typewriter effect stuff that you like and we can select an option here from our list and there we go. And when that sentence is finished and a few seconds have gone by, the dialogue system will hide and then you can press a button to launch it again. So we've got the whole cycle from beginning to end. Um, so let's get on with it. We're starting off with a completely empty project. This scene is 800 by 600, but it doesn't matter what size your scene is. We're going to start off by making one scene variable and it's going to be a number variable called text scroll speed. And it's going to be a number, like I say. And we're going to make the background of our scene black because we're going to have white text on black. And we're going to make two text objects. So this one's going to be called dialogue, where most of our dialogue will take place in. It's going to be 24 in size and it's going to be white. I've already got a font in my project folder. This is a free Google font, so I'm choosing that. And I'm just going to type some... Uh, placeholder text in here and that will help us with layout in a second and a second text object which is all this tutorial needs to text objects is going to be called options that's also going to be 24 it's also going to be white also going to use that font and I'm going to type something on two lines and that will help us with layout as well which you will see now here we go we drag the objects onto the scene and position them where you'd like them. Um, and this is a good opportunity to decide how wide you want your text object to be before text wraps to underneath. So you can drag it out here to be as wide or as narrow as you want. That looks about right to me. And give the options a bit more length as well. You generally wouldn't want your options to wrap. You want them on one line. Um, you don't have to worry about height, by the way, because it will automatically take care of that for you. Um, if there's lots of dialogue, it will automatically, you know, uh, run it down the screen. You don't need to worry about the height of your object on the scene. And that is all the setup we need. Now we're going to look at the events. Our first event is going to have the condition at the beginning of the scene. In other words, things that happen as soon as the game loads and happen once. And we're going to hide our objects so that they're only going to show when dialogue is running. So hide both of those. That's just how I prefer to do things. But alternatively, you could just delete the placeholder text and then the player wouldn't be able to see um, anything here. But I prefer to leave some placeholder text in and hide and show. Right, now we're going to make our dialogue. It's all going to get very exciting. Uh, load dialogue tree from a JSON file. Now you probably won't see anything here because you haven't perhaps created any dialogue before, but obviously I've been experimenting for the tutorial, but we're going to create a new one anyway. Um, and here we are in the yarn editor. First of all, we're going to give uh, our dialogue JSON file a name, just going to call it dialogue, very imaginative. This is our node or a node where dialogue is written. Uh, and a quick tip, by the way, if you hold down the alt Alt key and click and drag. You can navigate around, drag around, which is useful when you've got lots of nodes. So to edit the node, we double click it. That's the node title and we're just going to leave it as start. We'll be referring to the node title in our events a bit later. Now I'm just going to type some very quick sort of uh, text here just so we've got a few lines of dialogue to look at. Don't worry, I'm not going to write my memoirs or anything. Um, so hi Jack, how are you? Jack says, I'm fine, how are you? And like a lot of British people, we don't really answer that question, we just get on with things. Um, <laughs> and then Jill says, um, uh, would you like an apple? She's very generous. 
Um, and then we'll do our options. So give Jack a choice. So this button here gives you the uh, options sort of syntax. And to the left of that bar in the middle, we write what the player will see. So we'll say, yes, please, because he really likes apples. And to the right of the bar, we write the name of the node that you're going to go to if you select uh, yes, please. So we'll just call the node yes. And we'll make another option. And this time he's going to say no thanks. And to the right of the bar, the node name is no. Now, when you click away, the Yarn Editor has automatically made our yes and no nodes that we can get busy typing into. Again, you just double click into it. Um, if Jack says yes, then Jill says, um, great, here it is. <laughs> and if Jack says no, Jill says, um, how about some cake instead, which I would definitely prefer to an apple. Um, and that's it. We've written our dialogue. You just click Save and OK. Next, we need to create a dialogue launch event. So new event. And we want a key press because you're going to press Z to start dialogue. And then I want to check that dialogue isn't already running because you don't want to start dialogue if it's running already. So we're going to invert the dialogue is running condition. And then we're going to do three things. We're going to show our dialogue text object. Otherwise, the player won't be able to see any text at all. We're going to create and start a timer. So our search timer, a scene timer. I'm going to call this timer scroll text in, in uh, quote marks there. And we're going to start our dialogue from a branch. So start dialogue from branch and remember we it was called start and by the way this is case sensitive so if you spelt it lowercase s it wouldn't work the node name was start with an uppercase s so we will use that and that's our dialogue launch event if the player presses z dialogue isn't already running do this stuff our third event will actually put text inside our dialogue text object so what we need to do is dialogue line type is text. That's what we're dealing with first. We're doing options later. And then what we need to do is we need to change the text in our dialogue text object. So we select the dialogue text object equals, and we're going to set it to dialogue tree clipped line text. We're going to set up our scrolling now, our typewriter effect. So we want a sub event of this event. So not a new event, it's a sub event of this event. That's important. And we're going to compare the value of a scene timer. And remember, scroll text, it's suggesting it there. Greater or equal to, you can leave that. And we're going to compare the value in our timer to the number in our variable. Uh, what's our variable called? It was uh, text. Scroll speed, there we go, I forgot for a second. So we're comparing our timer with the number held in our variable. And the actions here is scroll clipped text. And what we also do here is we reset our timer. So basically, every time the timer is greater or equal to the number in our variable, it's gonna print a letter to the screen. The timer gets reset and the cycle goes round again. And that's how you get your one letter at a time. Our next sub event is going to look for a key released condition, not key pressed, key released. So we're going to use X for this. And we're also going to check that the current dialogue line has finished scrolling. It's completely appeared because we don't want people going to the next dialogue line when only half of the current line is on screen. We want, we want it to fold out completely. So we're going to check that. Clipped text has completed scrolling. And the conditions for this is go to the next dialogue line. And, and that's it for that one. Now the next one, next subcondition is X key is pressed. So 
we're using pressed, released, not pressed. We're getting a lot out of the X key. So this is key pressed this time. Yeah, make sure it's easy to get confused. Make sure this is released in this first one, pressed in this second one. And that's the only uh, condition for that one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change the value of our scene variable. Change number variable there, but it's a scene one. Where are we? Change number variable. Goodness me, why can't I see it? There we go. Text scroll speed. And we're going to set it to 0.01. Now this number represents 10 milliseconds, by the way, when it's compared to the timer effectively, it's 10 milliseconds, which is very quick. So in other words, when we're holding our X button down, our text is going to scroll really quickly because this is being compared to our timer. When our timer is greater or equal to this tiny number, a letter is printed on screen. Now we can copy paste this whole um, uh, sub event here, right? And what we want here is we want to invert this condition. And what that means is when X key is not being pressed. So in other words, when the player is just sitting back and letting the text scroll for them, they're not holding a button down to make it go faster. So what we want to do is give it a slower number for that. So 0.05, it will represent 50 milliseconds. So it's not quite as fast as this one. So actually, if we run the game now, you should be able to see what this looks like. So we press Z to run the dialogue, and there we go. That's normal speed. That's 50 milliseconds, right? If I hold the button, it goes a lot quicker, as you can see. Now, our options aren't set up yet. That's what we're going to do next. The first thing we're going to do for our options setup is we're going to tell our little game what to do when options aren't running. Um, so what we can do is copy paste this event here, dialogue line is text, paste it in and change it to options and right click it and choose, in, choose invert condition. So in other words, when options are not happening at the moment, we want to hide our options um, text object. So you can copy paste from there. So it's as simple as that. So in other words, when your dialogue is just, you know, ticking along, but there are no options currently happening, this gets hidden. And then we show it when we want it. So we'll do that with the next event. So what we do is we invert this again. So this time when dialogue line is options, I, you know, when options are actually happening, we want to show our options box. In this little tutorial that we're setting up, there's only one options interaction, so you won't really be able to see it disappearing and coming back again. But for your game, where you've got more dialogue and several options, you, you, you're going to want it to hide and show when it's needed, not just sit there all the time. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you don't have placeholder text in here, the player won't be able to see this anyway. So you could, if you wanted to, not bother with this at all and delete this action. But you do need this event with this condition. So we're going to create a sub event of this one. And we are going to, <laughs> I'm turning the page on my notes. Um, we're going to look for an up key press this time. So key pressed up. There we go. And we're going to use a trigger once here. I'm not going to go into what trigger once does because that's beyond the scope of this video. I'm deliberately trying to make this as quick as possible and as simple as possible. But trigger once for us here is going to prevent when you press the up key, the up key going crazy um, and being registered multiple times. With the trigger once, our up key press will be registered just once. But I, I recommend you look into trigger once. Very, very handy thing for your game. And what we're going to do when you press the up key is we're going to select the previous option. There we go. And we're going to have another sub event. And you can probably guess what this one's going to be. What happens when you press down? So this is the down and up cursor keys, by the way, when we use the word up and down here. And I'm also going to do a trigger once for the same reason, to stop our, our cursor going crazy. So, um, right. And of course, Guess what's going to happen here? Select next option. So there you go. Now another sub event, just two events to go, by the way, and we're finished. So we're going to have a, another key press here. 
we're going to use Z again. So we're just using Z and X for this whole tutorial. So when the Z key is pressed, we don't need a trigger once here, actually. This will be fine on its own. Um, we're going to confirm our selected option. So they're going up and down and choosing something right. And when they press Z, they've made their decision. Uh, and finally, for this tutorial's events, we want selected option has changed. And this, this event here populates our options text object with, with the options text stuff. So it's a bit similar to what we did earlier when we populated our dialogue options, uh, dialogue, our dialogue text object. Um, so we want that again, this sort of text one. We're choosing options this time. We're setting the text in that text object to dialogue tree. Uh, and what is it? Oh, vertical options list is what I'm looking for. I tell you, when I'm not filming myself, I find these much quicker. It's the pressure. And, right, so that's correct. Now, the reason it's red, it's complaining that we haven't provided a value. And what we need to do in a set of brackets there is give it give it something. You could leave it blank <laughs> if you were doing a graphical pointer like we did in the, my, uh, my first video last year. But here we're going to use a, a couple of characters. I'm just going to make an arrow there and I'm going to put a space in there as well. Um, and that'll be our little pointer. And if everything has gone right, uh, spoilers, I know this goes right because I've obviously practiced this before. So holding uh, X to make it go quicker. And then we get our options list. And by the way, this sort of shunting behavior is not something you can you can do anything about. Apart from, if you wanted to, you can delete that space and then they won't move. But the arrow will be very close to the text. So it's up to you, personal preference. So let's choose an option and see if our options are set up properly. And again, spoilers, they are. Uh, press Z. We don't want an apple. If you'd like your dialogue text object to be hidden at the end of the dialogue, I will just show you how to do that. Dead simple additional event. So we uh, copy paste this condition. Dialogue is not running, which is an inverted dialogue is running. And then we're going to do a timer check. Value of a scene timer. We're going to continue to use scroll text here. We just, just borrow it from the typewriter stuff because it's an existing timer that we can just use. Um, and we're going to hide our dialogue text object. So what happens is when the last letter from your last line of dialogue has appeared and then three seconds is counted after, the dialogue will be hidden. So you can change this number based on how slow or fast you think people will read. So let's just run it and I'll show you what that looks like. So we launch the dialogue, we skip through, and then if we make a choice, one, two, three. So there you go. That's what that looks like. After the question mark has appeared there and then three seconds have elapsed, your dialogue objects will be hidden. And then if you press Z, you know, you can launch it again. So that's the whole cycle, showing it, hiding it, skipping through it. We've reached the end of another Yarn Dialogue System tutorial. I hope you found it useful. I certainly enjoyed making it. And uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Good day to you.